During the life of the Prophet ﷺ, when things became too hard in Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to make hijrah. His house was surrounded. He escaped without them, Allah making them blind where they couldn't see him. He walked right past them. And he left with his best friend in this life, his Khalil, Abu Bakr. And in the morning when they had realized the Prophet ﷺ was gone, it was actually Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was in his bed, who by the way said that was the most beautiful night sleep he had ever had in his life. They sent people to chase them down. And there was one man in particular whom they hired, who was the best of those who did that, trackers. His name was Suraqa ibn Malik. The best of those trackers. He could track anything. So he said, I'll find them. No problem, I'll find them. So the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr were on their way and they heard the horse hooves of Suraqa ibn Malik chasing them. So they retired to a small cave up on the hillside in Mecca. They hid in a cave that was only really big enough for two people and it really didn't conceal much. If you did a little bit of investigation, you'll find the people in that cave. But this was, was it, this is all they had. And as Suraq was coming, the Prophet ﷺ made dua to Allah and Suraqa's horse fell into the sand, sunk into the sand and got stuck. And Suraqa realized what's happening. So he called out to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, make dua to Allah to release my horse and I won't follow you anymore. I'll give up my chase. So the Prophet released his horse and Suraqa broke his word and started coming at them again. So he made dua, sunk in the sand again. This happened a couple of times. And finally Suraqa said, look, just make dua that Allah gets me out of this, I'll leave and I'll also misguide anyone who comes along this way. Now the Prophet ﷺ called out to Suraqa and said something that caused Suraqa to think that this man's lost his mind. This man's out of control. He said, O oh Suraqa, how are you going to be on the day when the bracelets of Kisra are presented to you as a booty from the believers, from the Muslims? <laughs> Suraqa's Shaking his head, he's rubbing his head, he's thinking, what did he just say? This guy is by himself, hiding in a cave, everybody's looking for him to kill him. He has no support, he has nothing. And he's sitting here telling me that I'm going to be given the bracelets of one of the greatest kings on the earth right now, the greatest empires that the world has known. This man must be out of his mind. He's lost it. This is when he thought, he just said, that this guy's nuts. And he, they, just, they just couldn't realize what happened. But then the rest of the Meccans came and they started to approach the cave where the Prophet ﷺ is. As they got close, Abu Bakr became frightened. Abu Bakr, his human nature kicked in because it looks like this plan is not working. Ya Rasulullah, I love you to death, but this plan this doesn't look right. They're going to see us. Even if they look down at their feet, they're going to see us. And the Prophet ﷺ asked Abu Bakr, he said, O oh Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, what do you think of two people whom the third of them is Allah? And then he said something to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguards for us in his book. Do not worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Have no concern. For Allah is with us. And of course we know the story that the Meccans didn't see them. And they were able to continue the hijrah and build an empire that would indeed surround the world. The civilized world at one time. Later on, before the Prophet's death, Suraqa would become a Muslim. Then Abu Bakr's Khalafa came, it was struggle, they were fighting different elements within the Ummah, the people who apostated from Islam, the people who refused to pay zakah, a lot of things happened. Then the Khalafa of Umar came, and Umar was able to conquer the Persian Empire. And the bounty came into the Khilafah. And as Umar was going through it and distributing it, a box was brought to him and he opened it up. And in it was the bracelets of Qisra. So immediately, he said, bring for me Suraqa. Tell Suraqa to come to me. And Suraqa came and Umar presented to him the bracelets of Qisra, saying that this is the fulfillment of the promise of Rasulullah to you. And Suraka began to cry, remembering his past, remembering he was what he was once doing. And now look at this Ummah. The Ummah was so affluent that the braces of Kisra are sitting right in front of Suraka. And he made him put him on. You see, 
Suhaqa couldn't understand what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. Abu Bakr couldn't even really see what was really happening. But the plan of Allah was in full motion. Was in full motion. Sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't seem like it's working. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan.